Since opening in February 2000, Crow Creek Golf Club has become one of the most popular destinations for golfers visiting the Myrtle Beach area. Created by architect Rick Robbins, Crow Creek Golf Club's scenic and imaginative layout receives praise daily. The undulating L93 bent grass greens, manicured TIFF Sport Bermuda fairways, and genuine hospitality of the entire staff are the reasons you will want to play Crow Creek Golf Club. Book your tee time here on thegolfdirector.com. Go direct to their website by clicking the Crow Creek banner on the right or call the Pro Shop direct at 910-287-3081. While there, check out the apparel and accessories in the Pro Shop and do not miss out on the great specials in their restaurant. Play Crow Creek Golf Course on your next Myrtle Beach golf trip www.crowcreek.com Located in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, World Tour Golf Links recreates 18 of the world's most renowned and challenging golf layouts from 15 courses in three countries and nine states. The World Tour inspiration parallels the most elite courses such as okay. Augusta National, Wingfoot, Oakmont, Pine Valley, St. Andrews, and Royal True. Come okay? play Augusta's Amen Corner yeah. or the prestigious number one and 18 of St. Andrews. Experience international golf in Myrtle Beach. Click the banner here on thegolfdirector.com or go to their website at www.theworldtourgolf.com. If you're looking to play some golf in the oh, Myrtle really? Beach area, just call Dave at the Golf Director, 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. <laughs> just call Dave. Dave can get you on the course with the best rates on the Grand Strand. Just call Dave. If you're a little shy and you don't like talking on the phone, just chat with Dave. Go to thegolfdirector.com in the lower right-hand corner. Click chat. In a few seconds, you're going to be chatting live with Dave. Dave has some of the best golf packages offered anywhere. Just call Dave. 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. Tell your friends to tweet at the golf director. Hashtag just call Dave. 844-GO-GOLF-1. Just call Dave at the golf director. Ready? The Rules of Golf is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. I'm Martin Woodhouse, and today we're going to talk about things unfair. <laughs> <laughs> we started talking about that last week, Jeff, and um, as you know, we've been referring to the principles behind the rules and how they pertain to how we interpret the rules. Um, we talked last week about things unfair, which are basically three things that we don't need to deal with on the golf course that are not considered to be part of the game. And we're going to start today on looking at that little group of rules. It's rules 23, 24, and 25. Uh, 23 is loose impediments. We're going to talk about that, start off with that. 24 is obstructions, which are artificial things, movable or immovable. And then we have 25, which are abnormal ground conditions. So we're going to start off today with loose impediments. And uh, again, I always stress the importance of understanding the definitions before we go any further. Loose impediments, we'll start off by um, having the definition there. Loose impediments are natural objects, including stones, leaves, twigs, branches, and the like. Dung, loose impediment. Deal with a lot of that down here with the, the geese, right? <laughs> uh, loose impediments. And worms, insects, and the like. And the casts and heaps made by them, provided they are not fixed or growing, solidly embedded, or adhering to the ball. That's a loose impediment. Now, sand and loose soil, they are loose impediments only on the putting green. So you can move sand and, and loose soil on the putting green, but nowhere else. Snow, natural ice, other than frost, are either casual water, which is a definition again, or loose impediments at the option of the player. So if you have snow, which uh, we don't get too much of down here, of course, but uh, 
When we do, we can treat that in one of two ways. We can treat it as a loose impediment and brush it aside. Or, uh, if the ball's laying in it, we can actually take the ball, drop the ball away from that. So we can take, uh, uh, take relief from it or simply move it away. So we can treat it either way. Dew and frost are not loose impediments. So there's our definition. And um, we're going to look at some decisions which illustrate that. There's, uh, there's not a whole lot of decisions. We'll maybe get time to look at all of these today. There's a few interesting ones in here and a couple that have changed fairly recently as well. I, I have a question if it's, if it's not too early for not, me to... Never too early. <laughs> never too because early. you always remind me of, of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned insects and, and, the, and the heaps and mounds they make. Yeah. Or I think that's the way you said it. Right. So an anthill, which we have plenty of mm -hmm. here in South Carolina on our South Carolina courses. Yes, sir. Um, and I have encountered them on the course, usually in the rough. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I frequent occasionally yep. here. Um, so if I encounter an anthill yes. and my ball is um, lying on the anthill, I can mm -hmm. actually drop, I can take a drop uh, from from that anthill because that anthill is a loose impediment. Um, you don't take a drop from it. You, you move the loose impediments out of the way. I can brush uh, it out of the way. However, there is a local rule which is very commonly used, and it's one that I use in the tournaments that I run. It's on a hard card at the Golf Academy, uh -huh. and that is fire ant mounds. Yeah, because that's, that, that, that that's almost like a, what do you call that, a danger, dangerous situation. Dangerous situation, sure, yeah. Sure, sure. So yeah, that would be by local rule you would get relief from. So from if your if your ball is anywhere near it, if you have obviously if you have to stand in it, mm -hmm. that's uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, because what brought that to my attention was when you called snow a loose impediment and you could you could mm -hmm. knock it away. Yes, I, that made yeah. me think. What well, can you knock? You knock the mount, you you, can. or you could take a drop from it. Yeah, but with the anthill you can't take a drop. Uh, Molehill, same thing. Molehill, same thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What about cricket mole? <laughs> well, well molehills there mole there it's actually um, you actually do get relief from the mound because that is a cast made by a burning animal. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's yeah. see that's amazing that, that yeah. there are rules to cover all those individual Yeah, and the things. and the uh, the fire ant mound thing as well. That is the, in the local rule that's actually anywhere on the golf course. Uh, -huh. uh it's not just through the green, through the green being the area of the course except right. hazards putting green and teeing around and the hole being played. Um, it does include water hazards as well. So you, that's one of the rare things, very f rare things that you do get relief from in a water hazard. Now, you call that a local rule. It's on your mm -hmm. hard card with, with the tournament you guys yes. conduct. Do you, right. Is that pretty common at most any course? Very, yeah. very common. Yeah. Yeah, it's very common, especially in part of the world where it's an issue. And, of course, yeah. that's what a local rule is. It deals with uh, situations specific to that golf course interesting thank you sir yeah <laughs> okay um i think i mentioned this last week about the difference between a loose impediment and an obstruction um loose impediments may be transformed into obstructions through processes of construction or manufacturing and i think i did give you the example actually a log um that's been split and has legs attached has been changed by construction into an obstruction uh, rather than a loose impediment, whereas a piece of wood is just a, is a loose impediment. Um, or if you take a piece of wood and it's been manufactured into a charcoal briquette, <laughs> that is then becomes an obstruction. Huh. The, the, the relief is pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of differences, but um, just a little nuance there. Uh, one of the definitions was, or one, one part of uh, a loose impediment was that it's not solidly embedded. So the next decision is, what is the meaning of that? What does it mean, solidly embedded? Um, the definition of a loose impediment states a stone is a loose impediment if it's not solidly embedded. When is a stone solidly embedded? The answer is, if it's partially embedded and may be picked up with ease, it is a loose impediment. When there is doubt as to whether it's solidly embedded or not, it should not be removed. If there's any doubt about it, just leave it alone. Just leave it be. Hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a few. Uh, there's a couple of uh, fruit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of fruit decisions here. Half-eaten pear. I remember this years ago that there was a. I guess it's a myth, really, that um, if 
a, a fruit is not sort of native to that golf course. It's uh-huh. treated differently. That's not the case. A half-eaten pear lies directly in front of the ball in the bunker. There's no pear tree in the vicinity of the bunker, so it's clearly been brought there. And the circumstances, is the pear an obstruction rather than a loose impediment, in which case the player could move it without penalty because you can move obstructions in a bunker but not loose impediments. And the answer is no, a pear is a natural object. Whether it's detached, when it's detached from a tree, it's a loose impediment. The fact that it's been half-eaten and there's no pear in the tree in the vicinity does not alter the status of the pear. And then the next one is fruit skins, so banana skins, fruit skins, those kind of things. Let, those me, are, those let are me clear that up. So, so if I encounter a half-eaten pear in a bunker, yes, yes. what should I do? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. It's not yeah. an obstruction. It is not. No. Huh. no, it's a natural thing. Even though it's been brought there, brought there, yeah. and somebody's been eating on it, it uh, <laughs> doesn't change its status. It's, uh, it's, still, it's still a, uh, a loose impediment. And here's the anthill one. This is uh, 23 slash 5, the decision. And um, the question is, is an anthill a loose impediment? The answer is yes. And the player is entitled to remove the anthill um, under Rule 23.1. So you don't drop away from it, you remove it. Huh. Yeah. Except in here in South Carolina and where we have a local, I mean, here in Myrtle Beach where we have a local rule. In most cases, well, the local for fire ants for fire because ants. That, that would be a, a dangerous, yeah, dangerous situation. So, so we need to know the difference between a fire ant mound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. just put your finger in and see if they. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll know pretty, yeah, you'll quick know pretty if, quickly if they're, if they're fire. Well, that's where you get your playing partner to yeah. your yeah. Yeah. fellow competitor. Fellow, fellow competitor, right. get right. that right. right. We get my fellow competitor. Come here, check mm. this out, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this, this insect one, there's a couple of interesting intra- insect questions as well. And th- this is one that's uh, actually changed fairly recently. Uh, changed in 2010, I want to say. Um, the definition of loose impediments provides that worms, insects, and the like are loose impediments. The term the like includes creatures such as spiders. Technically, of course, it's an arachnid, it's not an insect, but... Uh, it's treated the same way. And here's the interesting thing, and this is, again, something we encounter down here as well. The, you get those big old banana spiders with the webs. Yes. You've done that, right? Walked yep. in the rough and walked into one of these spider webs. So the question is, would a spider's web be considered a loose impediment? Now, uh, if you look at the, at the strict definition, uh, anything that's fixed or growing is not a loose impediment. So... With the spider web being fixed, you would think it's not a loose impediment, but by decision, it is. So you can move that spider's web, which you didn't used to be able to do. Huh. Yeah, okay. So they've changed that one. Um, so the web made by a spider is considered to be a cast made by an insect and is also a loose impediment, even if it's attached. Even in a hazard? To another object. No. Ah, no. Ah, I thought there no. was a gimme in there somewhere. No. I got you. No, loose impediments are not... Uh, Even a spider don't get, web. Don't get relief from loose impediments in a hazard. Can't touch them. Uh, which brings me to a really one of my favorite decisions <laughs> <laughs> about um, insects. Uh, an insect is a loose impediment, uh-huh. and you can't um, touch or move them in a hazard. Now, hazard, remember, there are two kinds of hazards on the golf course. You've got water hazards, including lateral water hazards, and you've got bunkers. Uh-huh. Those are the only hazards on a golf course. Again, definition, a lot of people would consider a, a bush or a tree a hazard. Of course, they're not in the definition. So it's just those two things. Now, there's one interesting difference between those um, two hazards, the bunkers and uh, water hazards. There are they are treated differently under certain rules. One of the differences is that um, the margin of a bunker does not extend vertically upwards, whereas the margin of a water hazard does. So if your ball is in a water hazard and you can play it, which of course you're entitled to do, um, and there's an insect buzzing around and it lands on you, mosquito, and you slap that kill that mosquito on you what just happened well 
the, the, since the margin <laughs> extends vertically upwards, you see where I'm going? <laughs> since the margin extends vertically upwards, the insect is in the hazard. And under Rule 13.4, you cannot touch a loose impediment in a hazard. So when you slapped it, are you in breach of the rule? Well, again, strictly by that rule, you are, aren't you? Wow. However. However. <laughs> uh, obviously, the powers that be realized that was a little bit unfair, uh, unreasonable. An so exception. There is that, that exception there, so you're not going to get penalized for that. It did happen, and the, result, and, and the decision did come about because that did happen um, yeah. in a tournament. And somebody was penalized under that rule, and then they decided, well, that's a little bit harsh, so they didn't... Um, they they brought in that decision too. Hmm. Interesting to how that. those things happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, there's a few more animal ones here. This is a dead land crab. A ball lodges against a dead land crab in a bunker. May the crab be removed without penalty? The answer is no. It is a natural object. It's a loose impediment, um, so you cannot move that. Next one is a snake. What's the status of a snake? A live snake is an outside agency. A dead snake is both an outside agency and a loose impediment. So a dead snake you can move. It, 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 it is possible for an item or person to fall under more than one definition. Huh. Now, of course, we do have that decision, which we brought up before, about the dangerous situation. Right. And, uh, you know, if, you, if your ball is close to a rattlesnake or a water moccasin or something like that, that would most certainly be considered a dangerous situation. So, uh, so, so has there been any decision or anything relative to whether the snake was poisonous or not uh, to make that decision? I mean, I mean, it could well, be con- considered that if I get close enough to it, I might have a heart attack. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> for that, fear that it's uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just a fear of something yeah. is not necessarily, uh, or well, it isn't a, a reason that it's a dangerous situation. Gators, of course, we have down here. That most definitely is a dangerous situation. Uh, the decision is 1-4 slash 10. It's an equity decision. 1-4 is equity, and it's uh, decision number 10. And um, it gives the example of a, a poisonous snake or alligator, that huh. kind of thing. Um, but just just having a, a fear of all snakes, that's not going to be a dangerous situation. And interestingly, too, uh, the decision, and it's actually moved. It was 1-4 slash 11, but they've actually moved it somewhere else in the book was what about things like um poison ivy cactus oh yeah yeah would poison ivy be a dangerous situation and the answer is no it isn't and the way they worded that was it's it's not a dangerous situation it's an unpleasant situation (laughs) 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 which you have to deal with it's one of those play the ball as it lies yeah play the course as you find it so not dangerous, but uh, unpleasant. So you could just go along with that one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> there's the uh, snakes. Now, loose impediments can get very large, and there's no, there's nothing to stipulate the size or weight or anything like that. And obviously, we probably can't go through this decision without thinking about the uh, the stone, Mister Mister Woods, where he had yep. the help moving the stone, mm-hmm. the rock. Um, and there are a couple of decisions on there, not as a result of what happened. They've been there a long time. Um, so size is not part of the definition. Uh, question here is, is a fallen tree a loose impediment? And the answer is, if it's attached to the stump, no, it isn't, because it's still fixed yep. or growing. If it's not attached, then yes. And then we'll come to the uh, uh, how to be able to move those in just a second. Uh, this is a an insect, well, not an insect, but a worm, which is considered an elusive impediment, is a worm when half on top of the surface of the ground and half below, uh, is it a loose impediment which may be removed? Or is it fixed or solidly embedded and therefore not a loose impediment? What do you think? <laughs> <No one. laughs> well, I have no idea. I never thought about a worm. Well, in that situ- I've never encountered a... A worm has a, har- a problem on the well, golf course. But uh, it, it can of, happen. It's uh, uh, which is half. A, it's not fixed or growing, which means you can you can remove you can it. remove it. You can get a hold unless of it. it's in a hazard. Yeah. 
unless it's in a hazard. <laughs> That's right, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, I'm starting to get the hang of the hazard thing here. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a different, different yeah. place. Uh, then we've got one about an acorn. What else we got here? Oh, this is one um, which sounds kind of off the wall, but you'd be surprised. I've encountered this many times. Ball embedded in fruit. A ball is embedded in an orange lying under an orange tree. What is the ruling? And the answer is the player must play the ball as it lies or deem it unplayable since the orange was adhering to the ball. So it's wow. not a loose impediment. Um, I spent many winters in Spain and Portugal uh-huh. uh, when I was in Europe. And there was one particular course we played which was called Las Naranjas, which means the oranges or the orange groves. And there were orange groves all over the golf course. And, you know, they were literally lying all over the ground. It was not uncommon for your ball to go in there and just plug right into a, an orange. So Let's suppose so. that happened and the orange was still attached to the tree. Uh, well, either way, you're not getting really. Matter. Either way, yeah. It's either, either uh, play it. fixed or growing, yeah. Okay. Which, if right. it's on the right. tree right. Right. or it's adhering to the ball, if your ball is stuck in it, so um, so there's no relief there. Um, now, loose soil, we said, is is a loose impediment on the putting green, but then we've got loose soil and casts made by burrowing animals are two little uh, slightly different things. Uh, the next one is a player's ball lies through the green in the cast of a hole made by a burrowing animal. Again, there's a definition for burrowing an animal. Um, it doesn't just mean a hole made by an animal. It must be made for the purpose of shelter or habitation. Shelter or habitation. So if a dog has dug a hole, uh, that's not a burrowing animal. Right. He doesn't shelter in it. He doesn't live in it. Whereas a, a gopher or... A, Rab- no, yeah, a rabbit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a rabbit or a mouse or something like that. Um, they are burrowing animals. So if a ball lies through the green in a cast made by a burrowing animal, in addition to his relief options under Rule 25, which we'll come to, may the player remove the loose soil which forms the cast from around his ball? And the answer is no. Um, loose soil is not a loose impediment, even though it came from the cast of, a, of an animal, and then we had the molehill thing. The cast you can remove, but any kind of loose, loose stuff uh, associated with that is not a loose impediment. Um, this is something that uh, comes up, that, well, certain times of year around, well, everywhere really. Aeration plugs. Aeration plugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, are the plugs of compacted soil through aeration of fairways loose impediments? Now, they're made of soil... But it's not loose soil. It's compacted. Hmm. So those plugs are loose impediments, and you can move those out of the way. Yeah, it's kind of like they're foreign. They're yeah. 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 Well, they're, yeah, it's um, compacted. So that one, you do get uh, relief from that. The same way as the next one, which is a clod of earth. So uh, loose soil is not loose impediment, but a clod of earth is. And, of course, on the putting green, uh, loose soil is a loose impediment. Um, then we've got loose impediments which are, uh, are treated, um, which, which are used to surface a road. So you may have a gravel path, perhaps, yeah, something like that. Now, by definition, an artificially surface, an artificial surface is an obstruction. So you get to drop off of that, like a cart path, right? Even if it's uh, gravel or, and so on. But what this decision tells us is if the player chooses to play from the path, which he may, you don't have to take relief from the car path. You're entitled to it if you want it, but you may decide to play it. So the question is, if the surface is loose gravel, can you move that loose gravel in order to play that ball? And the answer is yes, you can, hmm. because gravel is, uh, is a loose impediment, and you can remove those um, if you choose to play from from that position. Okay, so those are some of the general decisions. Doing okay for yeah, a Yeah, doing okay. Right. Carry on. Okay. I, I'm intrigued. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, th- this is uh, relief from losing impediments. So the, the first decision here is 23-1-1. One one. 
the means by which loose impediments may be removed. And this is one that changed too. Um, it's changed in the, again, I can't nail it down, early 2000s, I think, 2004, how you can remove loose impediments. Um, like on, on the putting green, for example, you could, it used to say you could remove loose impediments with your hand or club only. That changed, yeah. and now it says by any means. So you can move uh, loose impediments by any means. Um, and then this is the, the Tiger one, I guess you'd say. Although, as I said, it's been, it was here many, many years before the, the incident happened. Um, just to remind people, if, they, if they're not aware, what had happened was um, Tiger's ball was in the neighborhood of a, a pretty big size, big boulder. I'm not sure how heavy it was, but it was pretty heavy. And um, he had spectators help move the thing out of the way. And that was perfectly legitimate. A stone of any size is a loose impediment, and you can move it by any means. And this uh, decision tells us that uh, you can have assistance in moving that. Uh, Question is, may spectators, caddies, fellow competitors, etc., assist a player in removing a large loose impediment? And the answer is yes. That decision is is a very old one, and it came about um, in deference to ladies and perhaps weaker players uh-huh. to so that a you know, big strapping guy didn't have an advantage over a, a less strong person, so he was able to assist in moving those loose impediments. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and the, the next one is the ball lies through the green directly behind a loose stone the size of a watermelon. <laughs> Tiger's ball uh, was actually larger than that. Uh, the stone can only be remo- uh, removed with much effort is it a loose impediment which may be removed? And the answer is yes. Stones of any size, not solidly embedded, are loose impediments and may be removed, provided removal does not unduly delay play. And that was another thing that came up with the Tiger thing. Well, it took a while for them to yeah. move this thing. Would that be unduly delaying play? Well, a lot of people don't realize in that incident, uh, they were actually waiting for the green. He couldn't have played anyway. Hmm. So there was no undue delay of play. So for all the Ferrari about it, there were, it was absolutely legitimate. It was a proper decision. And the other thing was it solidly embedded. It did leave an impression in the ground, for sure. But it was not solidly embedded. It was just the weight of it that caused right. the impression. It wasn't down in the ground. So, Is there any was, judgment uh, when it comes to that? by the rules official uh, once it's been removed I mean does that create a situation where a rules of- official may come over and go hmm that's not you know it t- looks like it was embedded well solidly embedded um, think of it like this if the if that boulder weighed 100 pounds uh-huh. and you were to able to maybe hook a crane onto it or something like that and it took more than a hundred and 10 or 120 pounds worth of force to right. remove it, then it probably would be solidly embedded. But yeah. uh, So there is a little bit of a, a judgment Yes, issue. a little bit. Yeah. And, and there was that one, remember, we just had with the embedded stone. It's in the ground. If it can't easily be moved, yeah. you know. And it, as I said, and it says, you know, if in doubt, leave it alone. Yeah. And there's a similar one, too, with an embedded acorn. You know, if you have to dig the thing out, yeah, it's solidly embedded. If you can just kind of get your finger and thumb on it and just gently lift it out, then hmm. then you can be okay. Yeah. But uh, difficult to define. Yep, solidly embedded. Um, so uh, assistance, also breaking off parts of a loose impediment. We just said that um, a felled tree uh-huh. is a loose impediment if it's not attached to the stump. But how in, how in the world are you going to move that? Yeah, right. Um, so the question in this one is, well, we can't move the whole thing, but there are branches on it. Right. Can we snap those off? Can we break off parts of a loose impediment? What do you think about that one? I'd have to say yes, but I'm probably wrong. I no, don't you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Really, it makes sense. You yeah, know? yeah, you can just uh, just snap them off uh, as long as it's part of the uh, the bigger loose impediment. Insects. We we had a couple of those before. Uh, and we've all had this, where an insect is on your golf ball, uh-huh. stationary or crawling on a player's golf ball. Would that be considered a loose impediment? Because you've got the question of um, 
is it adhering to the ball? Mm-hmm. You know, those little sticky pads, oh, yeah. you know? Um, and the decision tells us that is not considered uh, adhering to the ball. So you can kind of pinch it off or sort of brush it away or whatever. Another interesting thing, too, about removing um, loose impediment, any loose impediment, not just insects, if you move your ball in the process of moving a loose impediment, of course, that is a penalty. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of people don't realize is it is not a penalty on the putting green. It is not a penalty on the putting ah, green. Ah, really? Yeah. I'm sure we've, we've all done this. Absolutely. You know, you're on the putting green and there's a fly buzzing around or lands on your ball or something like that. And you just go, you know, try and brush out of the way and you accidentally hit the golf ball and move the golf ball. Right. Marked or not, addressed or not. Even if you've addressed it, it doesn't matter. And you move that golf ball, most golfers are going to say, oh, that's got to be a penalty. It's not. How about that? No, I didn't know that. Not a penalty. Now, I want to go back to um, in the fairway, Mm -hmm. and I'm brushing the uh, insect off my ball, and the ball moves, but it wobbles, and it doesn't move out of its spot. The uh, oscillating ball. Yeah, yeah. Situation. Well, okay. Well, now now we come back to a definition, uh-huh. and there is a definition for moved. Yeah, moved means that the ball has come to rest in a different place to its original position. Yeah, if it just wobbles, oscillates, and goes back to its original position, it, it didn't has, move. It didn't move by yeah. definition. Move okay. means it's come to rest in a different place. Okay, but that can be difficult to ascertain sometimes as well. And again, if there's any doubt about it, that doubt's going to be resolved against the player. Yep. If it, you think it might have been. I don't think most golfers are honest enough to, to think, well, you know, I'm not quite sure. I think maybe it did. You know, they're going to yeah. say it did. And of course, if you do move your golf ball, remember to put it back. You've always got to put it back yeah. if you cause the ball to move. So that was the insects on the ball. Uh, the insect in the bunker. Um, now, the insect in the... Uh, um, is considered to be in the bunker because it's by definition a loose impediment. The player may not touch or physically m- remove the insect from the ball because it is a loose impediment. However, as the insect is animate and capable of moving on its own, the player may take a- action such as waving his hand or a club or towel to encourage the insect <laughs> to move. <laughs> so we can encourage him to move. We can't touch him, but we can kind of give him a little... Uh, encouragement to move and then if the insect moves there's no penalty provided you haven't touched it and then we had that that uh, 13-4 decision we looked at rule 13 before uh, the flying insect yeah in the uh, in the hazard one of my personal favorites <laughs> uh, this next one's a good one too and, and this again is another one that people don't realize and it's one of those rules uh, that if you know can certainly help you out Can you move loose impediments in the area of an intended drop? Huh. The answer is yes, you can. So if you're taking relief off the cart path, for example, and you're going to be dropping it in pine straw, you can move all that pine straw out of the way, down to the bare dirt. And then drop. And then drop your golf ball. Yeah. Or leaves or twigs or anything like that. Just a word of caution, though, on that. You do have to be careful when you're moving things like uh, pine straw particularly because uh, it is a loose impediment for sure, but underneath the pine straw is more than likely loose soil, which is not a loose impediment. So if you start sort of dragging your feet or taking big swipes at it with your hand or something like that to where you're moving some dirt with the pine straw, then we're getting into a situation where you are uh, moving the loose soil, which is not a loose impediment. So you can sort of pick it away and just carefully uh, get down to the, the bad dirt. So yeah, I, I saw that take tonight. place on uh, one of the tournaments on TV, and I wondered mm-hmm. at the time why they, they were being so gentle with the pine straw. That mm-hmm. explains it. Yes. You can't, in other words, just can't kick it away because if you kick it away, you're probably going to kick away some loose dirt. That's exactly right. Change, now, change. There may be a little bit of loose dirt incidental to the removal, which is, which is okay. It'll yeah. give you a little bit of leeway on that. But if you just wholesale start swiping stuff away and dragging your feet and that kind of thing, 
you need to be a little more careful with that. And of course, the other thing is, you need to be careful that your ball's not going to move in the process. But um, that that's a good one to know about moving loose impediments prior to the drop, huh. um, or prior to the placement, even if if the situation calls for you to place your golf ball. Yeah, if you've dropped it uh, multiple times and uh, exactly right. Yeah. yeah, if you need to drop, if you need to place it after a second drop, yeah, and the spot where you're going to you're going to place it has loose impediments around, you can move those. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you certainly can. Um, I think we're getting can, pretty can we, close. Can we finish it? We can finish it. I'd right like here. to. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. All right. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Oh, you want to finish the show or finish the no, rule? No, finish, fin- <laughs> finish the rule, yeah. Okay, there's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a couple more. Let's see yeah. if we can pick out a couple of good ones here. Um, uh, when the ball is lifted, what else have we got here? Removal of loose impediments lying out of bounds. You, can you move those, do you suppose? If you're standing out of bounds to play a ball that's in bounds, can you move the loose impediments that are out of bounds? Well, again, I'm just guessing, but I'd have to say no. You, you can. You can. You so can. it's not like a hazard. And no. Yeah. And, and that's a little different also to obstructions because obstructions are by definition on the golf course. If, if the obstruction is off the golf course, you don't get to move that. Hmm. Or any part of a, a, an obstruction which is off out of bounds, you cannot move that. Loose impediments are different. You can move them um, even if they're off the golf course. So that one is okay. Um, th- this is another interesting one as well. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and read the whole thing. A, a player with a downhill putt picks up loose impediments between his ball and the hole. Fair enough. But he leaves some behind the hole thinking, you know, it might help me out here and serve as a little backstop. Um, so his opponent or fellow competitor removes the loose impediments behind the hole that might have helped him out as a backstop. What is the ruling? Well, this is an equity ruling. And uh, I know I've mentioned this principle before, that the player is entitled to the situation and the lie that his shot gave him. Um, so if somebody changes that, he is entitled to restore it. So in equity, the player is entitled, but not required, to replace the loose impediment. So if there's some leaves or maybe even a couple of twigs or something like that behind the hole that might help him out by stopping the ball running too right. far, and he chooses to leave them there, he certainly can. And if a fellow competitor or opponent moves them out of the way, he can put them back. Hmm. He can put them back. Um, now, the opponent or fellow competitor is permitted to remove loose impediments under Rule 23, and accordingly, he's not in breach of the rule, uh, Rule 1-2, exerting influence um, for, uh, on the movement of the ball. However, if the opponent or fellow competitor has refused to comply with a request from the player not to remove the loose impediments, hey, I don't want those moved, leave those there, he is entitled to remove them, but if he fails to comply with the request, now he's going to lose the hole in match play, or he's going to be disqualified in wow. stroke play. That's rule 3-4, uh, and that is a player doing something which affects the rights of another player. That's serious business, and he's going to get disqualified. That intentionally denying a player's right to have the loose impediment left in position and the same principle would apply <coughs> to the removal of a movable obstruction in similar circumstances. Um, just, the, just the last one on this, we're, ju- we're just coming to the end. I think. Okay. Kind of time that just, just about right, I think. Um, was I, I just told you about moving loose impediments on the putting green. There is no penalty for that. However, there's a little caveat there. Um, provided the movement of the ball is directly attributable to the specific act of moving those loose impediments. So, for example, if you're moving loose impediments and you, as you're bending over, you kick your golf ball, that's not, that doesn't fall under the exception. So that is a penalty. It's not directly attributable. And we see that term under a couple of other things. Um, like marking and replacing a golf ball. Uh-huh. If the movement of the ball is directly attributable to a specific act, there is no penalty. Otherwise, so it is. to 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 compare that, we were talking about 
swatting an insect and moving the ball. Yes. Okay, no penalty for that. Right. But if I'm swatting a loose impediment. No penalty for that either. No penalty for that. They're both loose impediments. Okay. Yeah. So if so, there's but, sand on the green and you want to brush it out yeah. the way. But if, but if I'm swatting the sand and brushing it out of the way and I kick the ball with my foot. Yeah. That's different. That's different. That's yeah. not directly attributable yeah. to a specific act. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you drop your putter. Yeah. And it moves the golf oh, ball. Oh, I've done that. That's not directly attributable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So th- yeah. Th- now you covered something that I've wondered about. I've never asked the question. It's really never come up. But mm. in, in marking the ball. Yes. And if you, if you move the ball in marking the ball, there's no penalty for that. That's it, correct. It, yeah. as, as long Again, as it's, it's a specific, the specific act. Yeah. Specific That's act. interesting. Yeah, and it, it really is specific to to. For example, if you if you've got a um, you know one of those big old poker chips or something like that. Yeah, and you're going down to mark it, and you lose your grip on it. Yeah, at let's say six or nine inches or knee high or something like that, you drop it, and it drops on the ball and moves it. Yeah, it's not directly attributable. Yeah, it's not directly attributable. That's it's just being be clumsy. That. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, we'll we'll get to rule twenty. That's the obviously the previous one. We call that uh, that has a, a lot of these rules have we have little sort of nicknames, if you will. Rule twenty we call the kick in rule. Okay, it, it never occurs before something else has happened. Once something has happened, then we move to rule twenty, which is lifting, replacing, and marking, and all that huh. that kind of stuff. Awesome. Which we'll get to at some point, I'm sure. I love it, man. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah. And let me say something before you read out. You're getting ready to read out. Sure. Uh, Martin and I did something for um, our listeners and other people that want to participate on our community page on thegolfdirector.com. Just go to thegolfdirector.com, click on the tab in the navigation that says TGD Community. There is a uh, On that page, there's a group for the rules of golf. Mm-hmm. And it's, we set that page up so that if you've got any specific questions for Martin or you want to discuss a particular rule, sure. something happened in your weekend play, and, and you'd like to hear Martin's opinion on it or we can discuss it there, we, we created a place so that you can interact. And yep. we encourage you to do that. It's brand Definitely. new, and yep. it's something we're trying to uh, get folks used to um, um, participating in. You know, right. but, yep. but it's there. It's on uh, the community page for thegolfdirector.com. Just go to the golf director.com and in the navigation menu at the top or at the icon under the main slider there's a thing that says community click it it'll take you there and you'll see on the right side groups yeah. and you'll see the rules of golf group there. sure and uh, i look i check it regularly so if, you know i'm more than happy to answer any questions on there or address them on the show awesome of course yeah yeah okay so, TGD yeah. Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, navigate over to our featured golf course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. If you need help with your next golf vacation, give us a call at 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-GO-GOLF-1, 464-6531. All of the DGD program is, is archived for listening and viewing on demand. And actually, Jeff told me this morning that uh, it's, it's going to be on YouTube also. Or yeah, we just uh, did some changes. I just put about 80 of our shows up on YouTube. They've been on Ustream. Uh, they still exist on Ustream. If mm-hmm. you're listening via Ustream, we're not going to be changing right. that at all. We're just giving that, uh, adding another place to view and we've embedded the youtube player for on-demand listeners on um, the tgd site and uh, so it's a little bit easier to navigate that way so now you can find our content in both those locations you stream youtube and uh, as well on the golfdirector.com website great okay this is martin woodhouse on behalf of all of us here at the golf director thank you for tuning in There's more TGD golf news and information information coming up next. Stay tuned. Awesome. Good show, man. Thank you.